Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Rod with Pilgrim's Journey. Um, hey, this morning I want to talk about um, kind of if you're thinking about becoming a live aboard and buying a boat, uh, what are some of the considerations you want to think about? Um, you know, I'm getting ready to transition back to sailboats. Uh, I've lived on a power yacht now for about a year. Here it is, December 2017, and uh, hey, it's been great. Uh, I think I'm going to miss all the space from a power yacht versus a sailboat. But um, so, so here's some thoughts uh, as you think about things. So the choices would be, do you want a power yacht? If you're thinking of a power yacht, do you want gas or diesel? Um, next thought would be, the next category would be trawlers. Now trawlers are going to go along at a little slower speeds, but much better, more fuel efficient, not quite as much space as a power yacht, but again, you get the advantages of a, a more economical, <laughs> economical, that's hilarious, an economical hull that um, is a little more efficient. And then your next thought would be a sailboat. Now, in sailing, we think monohull versus a multi-hull, like a catamaran. So um, you get kind of advantages, disadvantages with both. Um, with a monohull, you can buy kind of more boat for the money, um, but you're going to have to deal with the boat kind of heeled over it 20, 30 degrees as you're sailing. Some people it's a little disconcerting where a catamaran is going to sail flat it's going to give you a lot more space inside kind of similar to a uh, a similar feel to a power yacht so so those are your choices so you've got power yachts you've got trawlers you've got monohull sailboats and then you've got multi-hull sailboats uh, so those are the kind of main categories now i think as you're looking at a boat uh, and if this is a first time for you, you want to start looking at your lifestyle. What do you want to do with the boat? Do you want to go cruise through the Caribbean? Do you want to do the Great Loop um, of the 6,500 some odd mile uh, intercoastal waterways all through up through um, the north coming down through the, the, you know, kind of east of the Mississippi all the way down to Alabama, come around Florida and back up the east coast? Um, or are you just going to really live on it at a marina? So those are kind of some of the thoughts. Um, one of the things I found out is as I owned a power yacht, because it takes so much to fill up the tanks with diesel, and I, I chose diesel uh, for the advantages of diesel versus gas. Gas can is a lot more volatile. You've seen a number of boats that have exploded at the fuel docks. Uh, they tend to be a little cheaper than a, than a diesel boat. But So I chose diesel for the safety aspect, being a retired uh, Air Force officer. Um, it just seemed to be the logical choice for me. So, um, but, you know, if you're gonna just live at a marina, you know, some of those considerations don't matter much. But if you really wanna take the boat out, which I wanna take a boat out more, the, to me, the idea of a ship is to be at sea, not in, not in a harbor. So it's kind of like our lives, you know, our lives are meant uh, to be out doing something, not just sitting around. So, um, so that's kind of a first consideration. How do you really want to use your boat? Um, and what kind of a lifestyle do you have? Uh, are you a couple? Are you a family? You know, what are your space requirements? Um, I went from a 2,500 to 3,000 square foot house um, to a live aboard. So, you know, there's a little bit of an adjustment initially um, to uh, your space kind of limitations, kind of like downsizing to a uh, tiny house, uh, which is popular nowadays. Uh, I can't think of a tiny house that has the views that we have, so I'm, I'm loving this. Um, you're going to find out your life gets a lot more um, slimlined. You know, you're not buying as much stuff. You kind of break out of the buying cycles. Um, but what I, what I found that I wanted to do more personally was I really wanted to be able to go, if I wanted to sail through the Caribbean for a year, um, even, you know, go around to the coast of Spain, um, you know, I could do that. 
and you know, now I had to look at you know fuel cost. What's it going to cost me fuel wise to travel like that versus a sailboat, which is set up to be a lot more um, self-sufficient, where a power yacht is not set up, you know, typically with solar panels, wind generators, and all the things that you could live off a hook for a very long time on a sailboat and not pay marina fees. So, uh, you know, so those are just kind of initial considerations. Um, you know, my first choice as a new boater was to buy a power yacht. Um, I found an older um, Bayliner Bodega 4050. It was a 40 foot power yacht, twin diesels. I had uh, twin 453 diesels. And, um, and, and so it gave me two staterooms, two bathrooms, a really good sized living room, a reasonable galley, I mean, for a boat. Um, so, you know, it was a good consideration as a first choice. As I've owned the boat and I've done some repairs over, and over this last year, I've painted the hull, I did bottom paint, I you know had new props reprofiled. Um, so I did a lot of improvements to the boat, updated the GPS, radios, the things that really made the boat work as a boat. Um, so I've got a friend of mine that wants to buy this boat. And uh, so I'm moving over to a sailboat, and now my consideration is, mo you know, multi-hull and or monohull. So um, just an initial thought is, you know, when you're coming aboard from land, I mean, the way I think about it is, hey, if it doesn't work for you, let's say you spend six months to a year on the boat if you don't like it you can always go back to land and you've tried this new adventure and it either worked for you or it didn't so uh, to me it's it's just a pretty low risk because you can always sell your boat i mean my boat um i told a couple friends of mine i was thinking about selling it and buying a sailboat and i needed to buy a sailboat with whatever money i got out of this boat so um you can also think about what, what's your budget? Do you want to budget up to $100,000? This is where I had to make a mental switch for me um, to realize that your boat is now your house. So, um, so for whatever a house would cost, you know, think about it, what, what are you going to spend on a boat? $100,000 buys you a really nice used boat. You'll typically have the same maintenance requirements between new and used. I mean, new's always nice. Here's my buddies from Canada. We're getting ready to go to breakfast. I mean, it's kind of one of the things about this lifestyle I think that you'll find is really attractive is here's Julie. Uh, she's with Sean. They've got a small catamaran, what they call a pocket catamaran, uh, which is a multi-hull sailboat. Um, and you can get these are pretty reasonable. A, a bigger you know, catamaran is going to cost you a couple hundred thousand dollars up to a million and a half, two million dollars, you know. So, you know, it's whatever you want to spend. I'm kind of on the cheap living off of a military retirement. So I'm looking at boats kind of under the thirty thousand dollar mark, which rules out most monohulls unless you, you know, a monohull you're, or a multi-hull boat like a catamaran. Um, it you just spend quite a bit of money. It's about double the price for a catamaran versus a monohull. So, just initially, so that's your thoughts. Um, so, kind of get your you know kind of a risk assessment in order. Uh, what do you want to do if you're going to go to sailboat? You want to make sure you can single hand. My thoughts on sailing is you know take some sailing courses. I started in a sunfish many 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 moons ago when most of you weren't even born <laughs> so unless you're older like i am um you know so you know take some sailing classes and i, I tell you the going with the wind is great you know julie and sean here they're getting to head ready to head off to the bahamas this month they'll stop by bemini first as an entry point and then sail through the islands which is really great they're from canada they got to get out of the country anyway we don't want them here so um but so go ahead and, and make the jump. Start looking at some boats. Um, there's a lot of boats out there, um, even under the forty fifty thousand dollar mark. I looked at a friend of mine's got a Hunter forty foot Legacy sailboat monohull, um, and I went on their boat. And so far from all the sailboats that I've seen, 
uh, they had the most room. You didn't feel as claustrophobic. So a lot of boats are thinner because they're made to cut through water for a sailboat, and they're going to, you know, they're sacrificing space for speed. I kind of want opposite. Um, I'm looking for as wide of a beam as I can get on a boat. Uh, the thing you're going to find out between sailing versus a power yacht too is learning all of the terms. You know, <laughs> there are no ropes on a boat, you know, for a sailboat. And then all the sailors have these crazy terms for everything. You know, you got to learn left is your port, right is your starboard, you know, and then it gets even crazier from there with all your, you know, how your lines and out pulls, out hauls, and, and all the crazy lines, mizzen, masts, and <laughs> So, Genoa sales. So, you'll have to learn all the terms. It's going to take a while. So, uh, so go ahead. Start thinking about the choice. How do you want to live and what type of a boat you want to um, think about. And then, you know, after that, you know, start thinking about your budget and look at as many boats as you can look at. My that'd be my number one recommendation to you. Go on as many different type of boats until you kind of settle in a kind of a direction you want to be, whether it's power or sail. And then again, go on as many boats as possible to see what works or may work for you and the lifestyle you want to choose. So these are just some initial thoughts. If you guys have any choices or any questions, uh, feel free to contact me you know, through my YouTube channel or my Facebook page, which, you know, it's Rod Wedby. Um, but again, this is Rod with Pilgrim's Journey. Hopefully we'll see you guys at a, at a marina somewhere, maybe along the Caribbean. And um, hey, we'll have a root beer together since I don't drink. Um, and a, uh, I'll buy you a ginger ale at a, at a local club. So, all right, talk to you guys later. This is Rod with Pilgr Pilgrim's Journey, signing off. See you. Bye.